Yo, dude. Yo, you good? Yo, what's going on, bro? You done? I th- yeah. I th- thought we were in the park. Bro, we never leave the office, bro. What's wrong? The first thing that composes my layout is this proper wallpaper. I got this gradient blur pack from Allier and they are absolutely beautiful. There are 20 wallpapers in here at 5.6K resolution with a nice soft color blur and deep blacks on most of them. If you actually end up pairing it with a proper case, you can achieve matching patterns for a nice little contrast of colors to make things complete. I really wish I had gotten the Alpine green iPhone to match my forest green leather case. Regardless, the case and the wallpaper together still add some nice little color combinations to the device. I think it's fair to say that it helps make your home screen layout not boring. Look, whether you want things to look nice or not, the priority is to have the apps you use the most super handy. And that's what I've done here. I carefully organized this home screen so it could make my life a bit simpler. For those who have been following the channel for a while, you all know I create content full time. And so the apps I find myself using the most are Instagram, YouTube Studio, TikTok, and Twitter. It's my main socials and my only social. It's where I distribute my content. I have to admit, I've been enjoying posting on TikTok quite a lot recently. The comments are always super interesting and makes it enjoyable interacting with people on the app. I'm guilty of spending a lot of time on this app, but in my defense, I try as much as I can to use it to fuel my creativity. I think it's working because the account has been growing extremely fast, way faster than Instagram ever did for me, but I do owe my career to them mainly because it's where my content creation started. A secret tip for you guys, make as many reels as you can if you want to grow there. It's sadly no longer a photo sharing app like it used to be. And now more than before, I keep making reels on the app to expand or reach. For photos though, surprisingly enough, I find myself using Twitter. I literally grew the page from 500 followers to about 5,700 followers in a few months. And believe it or not, this mainly had to do with the fact that I share a lot of photos and interact with you guys through it. For some reason, our pictures get genuinely a good amount of exposure and it's nice to know that I have reached within. The last app here pretty much represents my life. The YouTube studio is what I use to track our videos, reply to your comments and check some of the analytics for the videos. I have a love and hate relationship with this app because the worst thing that can happen to you is opening the app and seeing that your video is a 10 out of 10. This is YouTube saying that it's your worst video out of the last 10 ones. Sometimes it just makes me rethink my life. Eventually, I ended up separating these apps with a couple of widgets. The first one is the batteries widget. Super useful, mainly because it's the app I use to track my AirPods battery, my Apple Watch, and my phone. On the other hand, Widgie is not really much of a widget. Well, at least it's not a multifunctional widget. It displays accurate data, but you cannot interact with it. The cool thing is that the Widgie app allows you to explore all kinds of widgets. You can also create some if you have the patience and the time, but I mainly found myself importing existing ones into my home screen. Below it all is where my most used applications lie. YouTube and Netflix pretty much represent my entertainment. I will say though, I find myself browsing 9GAT at night like 90% of the time. I've been a 99 user for the past 10 years. It's literally the largest meme community on the internet and it's been fun being part of it. Ironically, it honestly disconnects me a bit from the internet at night. Sometimes I do end up on Uncrate. This one here is an app that Jan uses sometimes. It helps you discover new products, learn about new experiences and consume it as a bit of a news outlet. There's literally like all kinds of products here, some that are expensive and some that aren't as much. I will say as someone that really likes watches, I don't think this is a safe app for my wallet. The bottom apps, I think we all know them by now. I use Discord to chat with the boys from time to time. I also use the camera app to take quick pictures the alarm clock to set all my reminders and settings whenever I wanna go behind the scenes and you know change stuff. My dock is what contains the apps I use the most. And yes, this also contains custom app covers to match my home screen. Safari is and will always be my main mobile browser. I have messages, which makes my texting experience way better than Android devices. Spotify, which is the app I use all the time to consume music and my mail app, which by the way is called Superhuman. Ever since they sponsored one of our videos a few months ago, I haven't stopped using this emailing app. I use it all the time on the phone 
phone because I love how easy it is to interact with your inbox, but I mainly find myself using their shortcuts through PC. The whole purpose of this app is to get your emails done quickly and it's all based on learning the shortcuts to allow you to reply to your emails a lot quicker and that's what this app does for me. I strongly recommend it. I also recommend you guys check out the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing learning platform that allows you to learn interactively with their fun hands-on lessons in maths, science, and computer science. They have lots of great courses for everyone with all kinds of knowledge levels. You can master all sorts of subjects in computer science and learn about algorithm fundamentals, data structures, and even neural networks all through interactive exercises. Instead of just memorizing theories, they actually make it fun for you to solve real world problems and train your critical thinking. For those interested in computer science, from fundamentals to brushing up your knowledge you already have, I think it's such a perfect way to get into or get back to the world of computing without any pressure. Brilliant really helps you understand how STEM actually works and how it's relevant to your everyday life. Take a look at me, a tech YouTuber with a background in computer science and software engineering. This eventually really helped me understand my tech and dive deeper into it. They of course have online classes for all sorts of things within the math, science, and computer science categories. If you want to learn more, give them a try, set up some daily challenges to give your brain a bit of exercise. Sign up for free in the description down below and the first 200 listeners will also get 20% off an annual membership. Now I do strongly recommend you reconsider modifying your app covers. With custom app covers, you no longer get notification badges on the apps themselves, which means that for an emailing app like Superhuman, I literally cannot know how many emails I've got outstanding. But if you really want to have custom iOS home screen like mine, here is how to do it. First of all, grab yourself a cool icon pack. I actually bought mine from Siobhan. He's probably going to kill me just because we usually support each other and just give each other stuff away, but go support him. Regardless, what you wanna do is to open the shortcuts app, then you click on the plus button, you add an action and you search for open app. There you go. Then you want to select the app you wish to open and change the cover for. So let's say settings for me. Then you got settings. You can rename this to settings. Then you click done. Click on this little filter icon and then you click add to home screen. Then in here, make sure you have the right naming. You can click on this icon and choose a photo. I can go get all my app covers in here. Settings, click choose and then add. And that will add it to your home screen right there. As you guys saw, you can then just drag it here. And there you go. But notice that if I click on it, you guys will get to see the little settings notification, which is really annoying. Luckily, that's super easy to fix. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and go to shortcuts again. Then make sure you're on automation. Click on the plus. Create personal automation. Scroll all the way down to app. Make sure that is open is checked. Choose the app you wish to avoid that notification for. Click, uh, let's say I want settings, then click next, then add an action and stop shortcut. So stop this shortcut, click next and make sure the ask before running is off. So toggle that off, don't ask, done. So now every time you go, for example, on settings, you will see that there's nothing. But personally, for pages like my financial page and my automation page and the productivity page, I decided to keep things simple. One thing I will share with you is that blank spaces are actually possible. It does require you to download a paid app called Clear Spaces, which literally costs about five bucks. But with it, all you need to do is take a screenshot of your home screen in editing mode, insert those within the app, open the widgets editor and add the size you wish to clear out. Then if you'd like to choose the right space to clear out, all you need is to hold the widget, edit it and position it correctly. It's actually pretty neat. Although it's the only clear space I find myself using within my pages, mainly because my finance page is a bit empty. Look, in this page, it's where I keep 
all of my financial apps handy. I deal with three main banks in Canada, although I will say that the best up to now for me has been RBC. I also have PayPal for when I want to do secure transactions and send invoices abroad in three different cryptocurrency apps. I recently partnered up with Newton and I actually really like their app. I have yet to move all of my Ethereum in here, but I really like how easy their app is to use. Plus, I like the fact I can just e-transfer myself money in order to be able to invest. Unlike Coinbase, which you need to purchase your investments with, I'm not a fan. As for my automation page, if you guys haven't taken a look at our automation video, please do so. This is where I have most of the apps that run my automation in the office. It mainly all interconnects with Google Home, but essentially August controls our front door lock. Alarm.com is responsible for our alarm system. Citus Link pretty much runs our entire aperture system and the rest of the apps handle our third party lighting in the office, except for the Godox light app. This here controls our TL60 light tubes that we often use to light sets. It's actually freaking cool and I recommend trying their tubes out. Honestly, start getting into automation guys. It really does level up your phone utility a bit more because it's awesome being able to connect most of your tech with these apps. The top widget, which takes like 60% of the screen is a life savior for our cinematics. I often find cool music on the internet and the only way for me to know what song it is is by using Shazam. For this very video, I actually found the song on Matt Davella's channel. I used Shazam and I found the artist. I ended up contacting him and paying the rights for his music. You guys should actually check him out. When it comes to productivity, this here's my holy grail. It's the page that allows me to visualize my month, notifies me of reminders, and allows me to write my captions for TikTok and Instagram, as well as checking the weather. And a lot of this does happen through the widgets. And I pretty much like using widgets for the most important things. The only app that doesn't have one and I wish it did is Notion. Notion is literally the most important app on my phone. It's where all of our deadlines are set, our sponsor budgets, our scripts, our planning for the week, the month, and everything we need to run the channel. I use it every day to make sure John and I are in sync, and it's actually an app that I fully recommend getting into, mainly when it comes to school organization. The rest are pretty self-explanatory. Although I don't use Google Drive as much as I used to, I actually finally got a NAS, and I find myself using their app to access my files on our cloud. I also only use Google Keep to share links between my PC and the iPhone. I know it's weird, but it works. Just like the fact that Imaging Edge works perfectly fine to use as a remote shooting screen. Pretty neat trick for Sony Alpha cameras. I really enjoy it. This pretty much wraps what's on my iPhone 13 Pro Max this year. This is literally the setup I've been rocking for the most part without the custom icons. I just wanted to deliver a bit of magic into this video. If you guys like the wallpapers or the custom icon packs, I'll leave them down below. You can support the creators and you can support me by smashing the like button for the algorithm. I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.